Hi everybody, my name is Herman Tripesh and I'm the lead for inclusion and diversity here at O2. At O2 we believe in creating a fairer future for everyone and this starts with our people. We are passionate about ensuring that everyone at O2 is supported to grow, develop and progress. We are clear about the critical value that a diversity of backgrounds and perspectives brings to our business. All of our people have a role to play in adopting the highest standards of business principles and practices. We do this by focusing on four key areas. Number one, we always demonstrate our accountability and commitment. Accountability, commitment and transparency are at the heart of our drive for change. So we've chosen from 2020 to voluntarily publish our ethnicity pay gap data alongside our gender pay gap. We also report quarterly on progress against our diversity targets as part of our commercial results. We recognise the importance of this transparency in embedding accountability and focusing our actions. Changing the makeup of our workforce and re reducing our pay gaps, we know that that takes time. But we're proud of our commitment to date and we know we have significantly more work to do to continue to drive change and make the improvements and progress that we need. Inclusion at O2 is sponsored by two members of our executive team, but it's the responsibility of all. So we've set internal targets at an organisational level and within our business functions to ensure that our senior leaders remain focused on their responsibility for driving progress. These targets are in place to ensure that we drive progress towards becoming a truly representative workforce. Our targets are focused today on our levels of gender, ethnicity and age representation with the aim of extending these to include disability, sexual orientation and social mobility in the future. We're taking positive action to drive equity and equality. We've learnt a lot in the last few years and have made several bold steps in tangible support of our commitment to becoming the leading inclusive employer. A recent example includes the introduction of our family leave policy in 2019, a policy that offers all of our people 14 weeks of fully paid time off to spend time with their new families, whether you're heterosexual, same sex, adoptive or surrogate parents. In supporting our colleagues from diverse backgrounds, we continue to take positive action to drive greater equity in all of our approaches to recruitment, engagement, development, progression, and to that end, we've created some bespoke development in initiatives around mentoring and work experience opportunities, specifically to target our ethnic minority and female colleagues. Also, we've mandated diversity in shortlists for recruitment and, and talent development investment. Building effective allyship and cultural competence is the final piece of the puzzle. We view that building effective allyship across O2 as central to the achievement of an inclusive culture. Our expansion of reverse mentoring across the business and current investment in the development of cultural competence across our board and senior leadership is enhanced by the introduction, introduction in September of an O2 Inclusion Ally program. This focus in raising our people's understanding and application of inclusive behaviours and empathy, we view these as critical to establishing a truly inclusive culture at O2. Our commitment to making these improvements, driving the change and championing equity and, equi and equality for all of our people at O2 will support creating a future that's fairer for everybody. The Black Lives Matter movement provided a renewed critical lens through which we needed to revisit and reconsider our re responsibilities to e inclusion. The recent action sharpened societal focus on racial inequality. It reminded us of our moral and ethical responsibility to raise our voice in support of racial justice. The imperative is for organisations, including ourselves, to take a stand to become actors and allies in the fight for racial e equality. Our action or inaction as a business and as business leaders will define our license to operate with our people, our customers and in society. We must match words with action. Part of the way we refreshed our inclusion plans was to make sure we listened to our people. Our network members told us that there were six key areas where as a business and as leaders we can and should be taking increased positive action. Number one was solidarity. Number two was support. Number three was equality. Number four, equity. Number five, awareness and education. And number six was commitment. So what do those things mean to us here at O2? Solidarity is about seeking to understand specific perspective and experiences. It's about inviting voices to be heard, listening to what improvements can be made, engaging in discussions, recognizing and demonstrating the power of allyship. Support to us is about being proactive. How do we support talent? How do we support the progression of underrepresented groups? How do we tailor and make bespoke opportunities to maximise the progression and represent, representation of all of our people, but specifically those from underrepresented backgrounds? Equality for us is about transparency of data. It's about having key performance indicators. It's about reporting progress against them. And it's about taking action. For example, voluntarily releasing our ethnicity pay gap. 
Equity is about access to opportunities. This is how we mentor people. It's about how we offer work experience and apprenticeships. It's about evidence-based talents, and it's about resourcing processes, shortlists, and more. Awareness and education is about active leadership positions on anti-bias, anti-racism, both internally and externally. It's about mandatory inclusion and inclusive behavior learning. It's about investing in our diversity networks, and it's about increased directorate and local ownership and action plans. We've made a commitment, and public commitments must be made because they force you to follow through and they force you to create and generate progress that you can share with clear responsibilities for us and for the wider business community. As always, inclusion is top of the agenda. It makes some people uncomfortable. For people like me, it really drives our passion to do things for people. While I have your attention on this round table, I was wondering if I could ask for a bit of your help and a bit of guidance on how you do things in your organizations. I wonder if you could help me to tell me how you proactively turn the dial on race in your organizations. I wonder if you could share how to leverage the energy around social justice issues to inspire organizational change. Also, can we explore the necessity and benefits of adopting a proactive stance on racial equality and inclusion? How do you capture and report on data to gain comprehensive insight into structural equality? And importantly, what tangible actions have you taken in your organizations to actually show people that not only do you mean what you say, you say what you mean. Being fearless in reflection is important. Can you help me to identify some areas of improvement to inform organizational strategies? I'm really interested to hear your thoughts.